That probably looks like I'm in the cockpit of an aircraft or the bridge of a futuristic spacecraft. I'm actually in the most advanced RNLI lifeboat on the British Isles, and we're going to speak to Terry, who's going to show us round. Terry, can you tell us about this really impressive lifeboat we find ourselves on? She's a Tamar class, 25 knot all-weather lifeboat, built of carbon fibre composite, light and fast. The, all the systems, as you can see, are brought to screens in the seats, so the crew can strap in the seats and don't have to get up and walk around when the boat's going at speed. Can you tell us about the capacity with crew plus the people you can pick up? The boat is designed for a crew of seven. We're quite happy with a crew of five. All volunteers, highly trained, to operate this high-tech kit we've got and the boat could carry up to 100 survivors in suitable conditions. The thing about building lifeboats and lifeboat design and construction is that these boats have to go to sea when most people are running for port in bad weather. So Terry, what sort of weather have you personally seen out at sea uh, on, the, on the lifeboat? You can have days of no wind and maybe 15 or 20 foot of swell. The wind doesn't worry us, the swell does. And you can deal with that in the day, not so easy in the night. And what sort of weather would typically get a, an amateur sailor into trouble? Moderately bad weather that's, that's perhaps not forecast accurately. Sea conditions coupled with tide on corners like Land's End, the Lizard, Pendine, where, where overfalls, wind against the tide, catches people out and they find themselves suddenly in conditions that they've never been in before. And it can be frightening. Telecove lifeboat, Telecove lifeboat, Falmouth Coast Guard, Falmouth Coast Guard, Charles Air, Adam. We're going to answer him, John. We're just taking a report of a kayaker, one person on board. Yellow. That has actually happened. We're now getting called out to a kayaker who's been spotted potentially fishing. Guy in a, in a paddle kayak is fishing. The NCI people had kept an eye on him and they lost him in the sun. So they raised the alarm just in case some, uh, something had happened to him. So he's uh, safe and well and wouldn't tell us whether he caught any fish or not. Terry, what questions would you like to ask our climate scientists back at the Met Office? The last few winters here, sea-wise, have been probably the finest in living memory. And I'd be interested to know how that tallies with more regular uh, severe weather events that are suggested by, um, by uh, global warming in the media. So we've had a great day here at Selling Cove with the lifeboat crew. We found out that their work is definitely impacted by the weather. And the first thing I'm gonna do when I get home is I'm gonna make a donation. So I've seen the sort of work that these lads do and they are all volunteers. So last week I was at the RNLI with Terry and his question was, last couple of seasons he's seen quite calm seas, yet in the media he's seen um, the prediction of extreme weather events. Can you give us any insight into that please? Well it's true to say that in recent years we have seen uh, calmer, less stormy winters uh, in the UK. Um, this is related to the fact that we've seen less depressions, uh, the low pressure centres that you see on, on the weather map actually crossing the UK. Now these systems, they bring wind and rain, but they also bring mild Atlantic air. So it corresponds to the fact that our, our recent winters have been uh, seeming to get a bit colder. So can you tell us, Jeff, what's led to this change occurring? The amount of depressions that have come across the, the UK in winter has fluctuated over the decades. So in the 1960s, we saw very few uh, storms, whereas as we come up to the, the 1980s or uh, the early 90s, we saw many, many more. Now, it's not really a, a, a proper cycle, but there's definitely a slow variation in, the, in the, the frequency of these storms over time. So, Jeff, what does this mean for Terry and his understanding that potentially extreme weather events are going to be becoming more frequent in the future? 
Well, we expect some types of extreme weather events like heat waves to increase in the future and others, like very cold winter days, to maybe go down. Uh, but unfortunately, when it comes to uh, windstorms around the UK in the future, that's an area where there's still a lot of uncertainty. In any case, when we think about climate change time scales, we're thinking out to maybe uh, 2050 and beyond. Thanks, Jeff. Um, thanks very much for answering Terry's question.